Uh. Hello, welcome to the Filmatic Show. I am your host, the Filmatic. Let's talk about book adaptions real quick. Uh look, there is a there could be a very huge, you know, level of artistic uh, interpretations of a certain piece of work. Like, we got the Harry Potter movies. Well, sometimes they drifted off from the actual text. They do manage to retain some of the original work. All except for the fourth movie, because that one w did not make sense in any way whatsoever. But there is one movie that was so wrong on so many levels it did not stay true to the original work it didn't even try to stay true to the original work I am talking about Robinson Crusoe starring Pierce Bronson now a little backstory Willem, uh, Daniel Defoe wrote the book uh, Robinson Crusoe about a man who is stranded on an island and he and then that time on on his time on the island he meets uh, a cannibal native whom he befriends and meets a whole bunch of natives and there's pirates involved and there's a mutiny involved and involves a uh, slave slave trade to a degree it was one of the most popular books of its time when it was printed in the 1700s it made Daniel Defoe, a literary, a literary celebrity, and he would go on to make other great works, such as The Three Musketeers being one of them. Or was that Alexandre Dumas? Anyway, whatever, he was a very famous French author. Let's just put it at that. Now, the movie adaption, starring Piers Bronson and no career co-star <laughs> none of them went on to do anything else didn't even try to even make sense of the book and the here's how I'll start at the beginning this movie was I mean overall the movie was enjoyable on its own terms it could be just a nice quick watch but if you're trying to watch it for good perfect adaption I say look somewhere else now, the movie starts with uh, a, a duel between Pierce Bronson and uh, his best friend in the movie. And as they fight for the, true, for the love of this woman's love, of affection, fight for her affection with swords, because that's how you used to deal with arguments back then. You used to so stab each other to death, and if it didn't matter if you were right or wrong, if the other guy dies, you were right, regardless. So... We have a duel, and he kills his best friend, and that's not in the very beginning of the book. That is not in the book, period. There is no love story intermingled in that. No, it did not exist in the book. What happens in the beginning of the book is he sets sail to the high seas to get away from his over-enduring parents because they want him to become a lawyer, but he wanted to become a sailor. And he gets into a shipwreck, but he doesn't get stranded on the island first. No, no, he does not. No, he manages to survive. And then he, go, he goes home, and he wants to go back out to sea because he believes it's his calling. So he does, he does. And he gets involved, gets part of a, he's on a part of a crew of a slave trader ship who are on their way to Africa to get slaves. Then he gets into a shipwreck and is stranded on the island. Oh no. No. Before the shipwreck, he gets attacked by pirates. Pirates. And then he goes on to the slave ship to go to Africa to get slaves to bring back and, total, and totally have them work for free. Then he gets into a shipwreck and he gets onto the island and that's where he stays and he has... Now the movie 
goes, Oh no, I killed my best friend. Oh, I must see now I must see my lady love and tell her that I must be gone for a long time. Gets into a shipwreck, gets stranded on the island gets stranded on the island, uh finds the ship finds the ship the wrecked ship uh somewhere else. And gets finds the captain's dog, which is in the book, I will give him that. But there were also two cats in the book. So he has a dog and he has two cats in the in the novel, but he only has one dog in the movie. Small detail, doesn't really matter. Uh, this is really the, I, my favorite one of my favorite parts of this movie though was he's he's on the beach and he he starts running around the island. He's running around He's running around. He gets to the other side of the island, and he goes, "I'm on an island." It's like, what are you? Ex what were you expecting? A peninsula? Like, where are you expecting a dock? Where are you expecting another port? You're on an island. Deal with it. I, it was just a really completely stupid scene, unnecessary. God, it, it was so... Pierce Bronze was so retarded on that. He's like, oh my god, I'm on an island. It's, and it's, okay, his Scottish accent is actually not that bad. It's actually pretty good. I'll, uh, that's one credit I will give him. Now, we... In the book, he, in, he stays there... He stays on the island for many years. A couple of years in, he... Stumbles upon uh, some cannibals... Some cannibals who are ready to sacrifice a couple of subjects to their god or gods and eat their and eat their bodies, basically. He rescues one of these natives and names him Friday, the day that he found him. Which is fine. That's in the book, and they and the guy actually the guy who played Friday was he was pretty good. I, I have to admit, he was a better performer than Pierce Bronson, actually. I mean, Pierce Bronson was able to get away with his looks, but when it came to the act, down to the nitty-gritty of acting, the guy who played Friday did a better job. And so they become, they learn to become friends, and he teaches them English, and he converts them to Christianity in the novel. Uh, he, in the, in the movie, he tries to, he keeps telling him that he's blasphemous and that, you know, you worship false false gods and all that. And and Friday gets mad. He leaves he leaves him, like goes to another part of the island, is like, yeah, I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm just gonna go to the other side. And then Robinson feels feels lonely. So he tries finding him and he goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Friday. I didn't mean to do that to you. So he lets him worship his own god. It doesn't happen in the book at all. And then they spend, and then they're trying to think of the next time when the natives will be showing up again, because apparently that island is where they go to do their sacrifices whenever there's a new moon or something like that. And and that's kind of in the book. It, it, it's kind of in the book. Ah. Mm. Excuse me. And, oh, God. Um, they, he tries making a boat. He gets a... Robinson tries making a boat in the movie. And he gets blown away from a, in a typhoon. Uh, they set up... They, they know the natives are after them now. So they do, a, like, a... So we're treated to a nice, like... Home Alone esque montage of them setting up traps, and uh, yeah, and and everything, all that good stuff. Um, then the natives come, and then Bing Bang Boom, they, uh, gunpowder boom explosion. We got rid of those natives, yay! Um, and then he gets shot. He gets shot in the. Uh, in the shoulder by an arrow, and he's just like, I don't want to die on this island. It's like, I, okay, you got shot in the shoulder with an arrow. I think you're gonna be okay. So Friday, so Friday feels bad and decides to uh, take one of the news boats and 
get uh, row him to his island, but it's a risk because on hit on Friday's island they find they he, they think he's they're dead he's dead to them basically, and so his wife he says that his wife just married someone else, and then they uh, they're told that they can't like I guess they don't since Friday is basically a dead man. And since Robinson Crusoe is a white man, they have to kill one of them. And or, or I don't know why they can't just kill both of them, but uh, they say you have to, in order for you to survive, you have to fight each other. If one kills the other, you get to live and vice versa. So there we go. They're fighting, they're fighting, and Robinson doesn't gets a drop on him, but he doesn't want to kill him because he's his best friend, which is noble. And Friday wants doesn't want to kill him because he's Robinson is his friend, Noble. And then we get the worst do ex machina I have ever seen. Just right at the at the moment when Friday has his sword thing ready to go kill Robinson. And with perfect and impeccable timing. He gets shot, and the white man has arrived, which I don't know how they snuck into that camp in the first place. And it, it was ter it's a terrible Deux Ex Machina. It, okay, for some who don't know what a Deux Ex Machina is, it's when um, the protagonist is in trouble, and then something unexpectedly shows up to save him at the last minute. That's a Duex Machina, and it was really terribly, really terribly done in this movie. And he goes on to say that it's ironic because, like, the white man came to enslave Friday's people, and I and that I owe them my own freedom, which is a very ironic ending I, for that portion of the story. And it gets worse. It gets worse. It, it it's like it couldn't end there. We see him back in Scotland. I don't know why they're in fucking Scotland when the book is clearly in French. Um, and you would think, oh, well, he's obviously going to go see his lady love, but he's been gone for so long, she's either going to be married to someone else or dead. She's not dead, but she doesn't marry anyone else either. What the fuck? I mean, seriously, that is the most one of the most cliched endings that anyone could make up for a stupid, stupid book adaption like this. I mean, oh god, I, it's just what the fuck? It's a, it's a it ends on a happy ending. I mean, in the book, it ends on a happy ending, but in completely different terms. He and, he and Friday live, by the way, in the book. Friday lives and goes to France with with Robinson. He goes with he goes with him to Robinson, and he basically is his companion for the rest of his life. And they and you also get to meet Friday's dad because they rescue him too. There's a Spaniard who tells him that there's a ship coming or there's a ship nearby, and then they find a ship. A ship comes to them, and there's it's because they're gonna drop some mutant. Like they're ca the sailors are dropping their captain off because it's a mutiny, and so Robinson strikes up a deal with the captain and some of the other loyal sailors, and then they take the they overpower the mutineers, and then they put them on the island, and then Robinson tells them how to survive on the island. That is a way better ending than this movie gave you, or gave me. It was so cliched, so cushy, so cheesy, so stupid, so ridiculously retarded. I think a monkey with brain cancer could come up with a better book adaption than this movie did. This, oh god, it... The perform okay, and the performances weren't terrible. No, the performances were actually alright. It, it can be very decent in parts. Uh, if but if you're gonna watch this movie, like just expecting, ooh, a book adaptation of Robinson Crusoe, ooh, I can't wait to see how they did this. You will be very greatly disappointed if you go into the movie with like that. I say, if you ever watch this movie, which I know some of you won't, I say go into this movie 
just just say, oh, I'm just here to watch a movie. Because that's what it all is. It's just a movie with, you know, stu stupid plot points, stupid cliche terms, and a ridiculously stupid ending. I would give this movie a 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10. The, the way that they handled the text really knocked points off of it. Sloppy. Really sloppy. That was Robinson Crusoe. So, thank you for watching. If you need, if you want me to watch a movie, for some of you who actually have watched these videos so far, leave a comment down there or something. Uh, make a movie suggestion. I'll find it. I'll watch it. And I'll review it. So, until next time.